boom, boom. And what kind of energy do we have? Meet Ted Lout. He teaches science at Thoreau Middle School, and for now, he wants to hear his students talk about energy flow diagrams. Okay, so blue marker is going to be your consensus. I want to start hearing your lovely voices. I miss them. Go, talk. I agree with your ideas. When the electricity have to travel through a circuit? Learning is messy. This is the messy. This is not the classroom that I grew up in. What may have changed since Mr. Lote was a student is the role of guided inquiry. According to recent studies, if a teacher can provide instructional scaffolds that help frame conversations about science, then students can eventually guide their own learning. Discourse tools support guided inquiry by providing students with key words and phrases to analyze, clarify, and defend scientific information. This classroom needs to hear them talking. We need to trust these students. They can do it. That's the one thing I've learned probably more than anything, is to let go of the reins. Let them guide each other. So we have to like interact. I think it helps us learn. Because we don't just have to like listen, take notes. You could actually like say it, and that might help us remember it, rather than just having to like stare at a teacher. It's not about coming up and showing them the right answer. It's about them trying to find an answer. Whether or not it's right or wrong, that'll come at the end. But the critical thinking, the building, the problem solving, watching them do it together, these are the skills that these students need. Yeah, we can put a circuit and then make it electrical. Within and between groups are where the discourse tools are utilized. As students compare and contrast their answers, they come to an agreement as to which energy flow chart makes the most sense. So today, we went on a little bit of a journey. We started with our individual thoughts and we put those down on a pre-write, on the pre-question, the first question that they have from their lab book. No talking, just writing. Okay, so what Nick's doing right now is he's doing his pre-write about what he individually thinks is the energy flow diagram for a motor and a generator. Now, we put up on the board the scaffolds that he can use for examples of words he might want to put in his energy flow diagram. And then we did this great thing where they came together and they did a within-group strategy. That was the consensus placement. So what they're doing now is they're using our prompts, our discourse prompts, defend, challenge, and persuade, which is a little bit higher level thinking than what we normally do with the general discourse tool prompts. Um, and it sounds funny listening to them at first, but they're really getting a higher level thinking as they need to defend, challenge, persuade each other for what the correct answer is that they're going to have for their consensus. We're going to have about a minute at each team's consensus. You're going to comment on the sticky note using this prompt. We also include the circuit. Which, um, which was One of the things I'm looking for while they're going on this gallery walk is that they're talking to each other, is that they're talking using the prompts that they have, and they're having a discourse discussion at each team's uh, poster board. That gallery walk was our between group discourse, and the students this time really we're able to kind of bump it up. Basically, I agree and disagree, but why do you agree and disagree? All right, get there. They came back, they sat down, they were able to look at what everyone commented on. So now we had a, a individual, then we had a within group, then we had a between group. Now they come back, look at their chart paper, synthesize all that information that they just gathered, and they write down their post write. It balanced um, self-work time and group work time really well, and I feel like just the amount of group work time it had really allowed us to um, compare ideas about, and it helped me bounce ideas off my group and just overall make a better understanding of this. The bell is about to ring, and students finish up on their own. There's a high probability that each student will remember and apply knowledge of turbines and motors in the years to come. It just took a little planning and a few prompts. They're actually using these prompts to write down why they disagreed or why they agreed. Um, this, to me, is where the magic happens.